Hello guys, Nat Racer once again, and this is gonna be my recent packs of vlog, if you or whatever. Well, basically, the thing I wanna talk about this time is Street Fighter V, Evo 2015, Ultra Street Fighter IV Grand Final, and yes, I'm talking about a fighting community, but again, just for the record, not part of the FGC. But I had nothing else to watch, decided just to watch it, and it was sort of interesting, even a journal consumer or somebody just from part of the gaming community can understand even what the situation is. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Batman, the Arkham series, my thoughts about it, and the CEO of Sega basically making a statement that in the Tokyo Game Show there will be a lot of changes what's going to what's going to happen. So with that, I'm going to start with my thoughts on Street Fighter 5. Uh, you already been hearing this time and time again which is Street Fighter 5 it's going to be exclusive for the PS4 and PC. Yes, we know PC is not a console whatever people are, you know, I'm going to I'm going to stay away from that. I think PC is also a gaming system, it's an alternative to a console, just as my opinion, let's move on, is, and of course, the reason why it's exclusive to Sony, is because Sony is basically handling the finance, kind of like what Bayonetta 2, Dead Rising 3, and etc, etc, so, yeah, it's, a, it's some sort of trend, so, complaining, oh, the game's not multi-platform, sorry, it's a business, what can you do, so, I mean, whether you love it or you hate it, it is what it is. So, they had a panel during EVO about Street Fighter V. And the thing that was interesting is how they're going to approach this game versus the previous one. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So, anybody from the OG time, everybody who played Street Fighter II, anybody who grew up in the 90s uh, with the, in the video game community knows the history of Street Fighter 2. Okay, not Street Fighter, because Street Fighter 2 became a mainstream fighting game for the fighting fan gamers, let's just say that. Believe it or not, it was Street Fighter 2. If you ever wonder why the roster of Street Fighter 4 is based on Street Fighter 2, there you go. So that's not the point. It's basically the story is, you know, that Street Fighter 2 had multiple versions before they went to the next game. Street Fighter 2, Championship Edition, which you can play the four boss, Turbo Edition, which is new balances, and the Turbo Mode, Super, which is basically four new characters, and then Super Turbo, which is again a Turbo version, adding a new one new character, totaling of 17 characters, and again a Turbo Mode. And that's been Capcom's the procedure of how to how to make a sequel to the game, how, making Street Fighter game longevity to some extent, is by rehashing it. Again, people are calling it melting it. But you also got to understand in the old days, there is no such thing as download, there's no patch balances, no updates, no expansion set. So how do you how do you how do you update a, a arcade board? You don't. You gotta you have to start from scratch. You have to have a new arcade board. Sort of. That's how it goes. Same goes with Street Fighter Three. Street Fighter Three did the same thing, <laughs> which is Street Fighter Three, Second Impact, and Third Strike. Same deal. They keep adding new characters, balances, but every time they do new improvement, they have to start from scratch. That's how it goes. And then, of course, when Street Fighter 4 came, you kind of still, well, from Street Fighter 4 to Super Street Fighter 4, yes, it's the disc thing. But when Super Street Fighter 4, all the way to Ultra Street Fighter 4, you have two choices. You can buy the full disc if you want, or you can buy an add-on expansion to expand your game. See, that's why I'm not, I mean, even so that they'll make, they'll make, uh, ugh, excuse me, even so that they were milking the Street Fighter 4 franchise, it was basically only that you had to buy this from Street Fighter 4, 
the vanilla, that's what people call it, to Super Street Fighter 4. And according to Ono, the reason they had to go to a this approach at the time, that there were a lot of major changes, there was big changes, that when Push cut the show, they said that, that the file was so big, you know, that it can be fit on a disc, that it's the size of a disc, so why not just put it in a disc? And just sell it for 40 bucks. Okay, granted, maybe you can do it cheaper, like $20, whatever. But at least they waited a year later. It's the same goes with the other games, to some extent. They did wait later. I mean, even, I think, the home console also with Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter 3, not so much due to the fact that it partly came to the console. I remember Second Impact was only in the Dreamcast. Third Strike was only in the... PS2 and Xbox, and of course, the online edition that took a long time, so on PS3 and the 360, that's a download, but again, in Street Fighter 4, you can't really, well, you can't say, oh, they're milking the franchise, but to some extent, there's an expansion, so basically, so you can have the full disc, sell it, buy it for 40 bucks, 40 dollars, or get the add on and just put it on there you go simple enough so basically I, I do apologize for that long history but you cannot understand what I'm getting into which is Street Fighter 5 they had a panel during EVO 2015 and they basically said this that the game you can only pay $60 on the premium starter set. So like, wait, 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 what? What's going on? All right. So the days of super, mega, ultra, you know, a better version is no more for Street Fighter Five. The way they're gonna do this, and again, unless if you like, you don't mind the big updates on your PS4, is that there's gonna be a lot of major updates. Think of it as an MMORPG, like Final Fantasy fourteen, a paid one, or free to play to some extent, with expansion. That's what they're going to do with Street Fighter V. You're paying a $60 game. So far, they just said you start with 16 characters. That's the first 16. Four new ones. And 12 returning ones. But you say, well, I don't like, say... Oh, I don't like the I don't like the 16. They suck. I need I want my character. I want it back. That's the thing. They'll do a daily update from there. So you know, be new characters gonna be added, new I guess mode, cosmetic stuff. You name it. Cos yeah, cosmetic character, maybe stages. I don't know. Yeah, and I think they're not gonna do gem system like from Street Fighter across Tekken. And I might give my opinion about that game. I did give it like a quick brief opinion on one of my an episode when I was commentating, showcasing, commentating Street Super Street Fighter 4 the Arcade Edition. But it's a different story. I want to give a full in depth about that one game. But the gist of it, it was the game wasn't that bad. The gem wasn't that bad. But the problem is the hardcore FGC basically just pooing the game so much. That it is unfortunate that even the general consumer hearing it, they say, well, if this expert guy say the game is poo-poo, well, it might, it might be a really poo-poo game, which is, in my opinion, no, it's not. It had some, a little bit of problem, but if, we, a little, if they just had, basically, if they had a no, and this I'm going to say this, the ABC combo was okay. If they had a no gem mode, if they just put in a no gem, gem mode, each of the characters have like a base that, that the FGC was willing to use, boom. But they didn't. They were keep pushing in the gem, and you're basically putting some sort of RPG on a fighting game, which is kind of weird. But yeah, I mean, they were trying something new. Again, the general consumer had no problem with Street Fighter Cross Tech, and it was just the FGC. My thoughts about it. In that block, coming soon. Back to Street Fighter Five. <clears throat> so basically, sixty dollar game. And then you can get the free add-on, and here's the catch: you don't have to pay for it. You can get it in game with 
in-game currency. They call it fight money. Yes. The one you hear when Balor gets beat up, you say, Oh, my fight money! Something like that. So, what do I think about it? I think that's a good move. Pay $60 for the premium starter. That's why I call it premium, because you got a lot of stuff already in the $60. It better be worth $60. Just my opinion. And then from there, you can get free characters, free cosmetic stuff, mode, whatever, if you earn enough currency. They kind of did that with Street Fighter, or, or excuse me, Tekken Revolution. They kind of did that. Same goes with Soul Calibur, the free to play single player mode. They did that. And also with. Ace Combat, and I think that another free to play game, that's what you do with that's what it is. And by the way, so Caliber free to play game, not that bad, but it is more of a storytelling game, you know, you're more of ranking versus finding each other, different story. But again, back to Street Fighter 5, that's actually good. You see, well, is it really possible to get a lot of those all free characters without paying? And to tell the truth, yeah, it is possible, believe it or not. I done it myself. I played a lot of free to play game that had a big reward and I was able to get him. Case in point for Sony the what is it the what's that game? Princess Cake? I forgot the game called I used to play it for a while. It's a, for the mobile mobile game from Sony. Princess Cake I guess I'm just gonna call that. And it was like some sort of bejewel. And if you reach enough certain level like in the game and you finish it, you get a code for the actual PS3 game. And I was able to do it without paying. Another one much much closer, Final Fantasy Records Keeper. You don't have to pay. You can pay to get an up uh, uh, head start. You don't have to. You can earn it in-game and you get enough stuff to actually go progress the game. Big one for me, Mortal Kombat X for the mobile game. Oh, yes. Yeah, you know, say what you will about mobile game, you know, pooing about it. But guess what? I was able to unlock a lot of the stuff that helped me with the console version. And I was able to get good cards. Guess what? Did I have to pay? No. It took a long time? Well, definitely. But enough play time, you get better cards, and you make the game easy, and you get a reward. So, if they're doing that with Street Fighter V, hey, I'm all for it. I agree with that. It's better than... DLC dislike content on the disc that was stupid with Street Fighter Cross Tekken. I'm sorry to say, add on characters you can get it for free by using in game fight money. Let's just call it fight money. Or if you want Zenny, which is their cap conversion of money with real money, hey, that's your choice. So that's a better approach than by like a super version, mega version, ultra version, whatever version. Hyper dimension up, dimension up, whatever version. Yeah, I know. That's actually my opinion. That's a good move. Sixty dollars, and you can get and you can get other stuff free if you have enough fight money. How do you do it? Just keep playing the game. That's it. So how the game is gonna work? Well, we don't know because the rumor is. This game is going to be released before Mar I mean, before April 2016. So, I mean, according to the Capcom Financial Report, it'll be the 26 by the end of the 2016 fiscal year, 2015 or 2015, 2016 fiscal year. It's gonna confuse. Yeah, 2016. My mistake. Yeah, the 2016 fiscal year. Yeah, they just finished the 2014. Uh, I get confused with this thing. By the by, the end of the 20. 16 fiscal year you'll be able the game's gonna be released so again hopefully they're not gonna rush the game again they hope they did learn their lesson from Street Fighter Cross Tekken and Marvel vs. Capcom 3 one of the biggest problem what happened there was that Street Fighter Cross Tekken and Marvel Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 were released very close to each other, like four months apart, but that's still close. And people weren't buying it because at the same time there were a lot of games that they were basically coming out that people were rather buy. And also the backstory really is besides Street Fighter Cross Tekken, all the the debunkle of the dislike content and the excuse me. 
in the gyms. The problem with Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is it was a double dip because you release a game not even a year, nine months from the original one, and you didn't bother to do a add-on, like an expansion version of it. And a lot of reasons come out, and one of the reasons they said was, there was a, I can remember, there was also the tsunami in Japan. And Kako basically said there was a tsunami affected them, but there was also rumor going around that where Capcom is, the tsunami didn't affect them. I do apologize if that's a little bit going too far, but that's what I heard. But at the same time, what people were saying, that there was, they didn't know how to do expansion, they didn't know how to do an add-on in Japan. Capcom, yeah, didn't really understand the part, so they just said, well, you know, since it's tradition, maybe people will accept it, which is wrong. It's called double dipping. You know, so... You basically buy paying a hundred dollar game. A lot of people didn't buy Ultimate Marvel, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom, uh, beside the FGC because it was double dipping and into the fortune. And uh, and so sad right now because of the Marvel license from Capcom, we can't even buy it digitally. And uh, trying to find a game, good luck with that. They can't even manufacture that game anymore. They're done. So, I mean, it is an unfortunate what happened. I mean, again, it's a good game, but the business side of it just messed up that game. And I know there was a reason they said that this version was, that there was a rumor that Capcom were catering to the FGC, saying that the FGC, they, you know, why not just put it on a disc and put an update there? Okay, that's fine. But for the rest of the gamer who just wants to play the game for fun, not for glory... They just, they told you, well, well, they, well, Capcom screwed us. I'm not paying $90 for this. This is BS. So, that's what happened. So, anyway, that's my thought about Street Fighter V. I think it is a good starter. Hopefully, they do le learn their lesson from Street Fighter, Cross Tekken, and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. And, of course, I bet you this game is going to be going to be one of the top main games starting, I guess, well, April. Because that's when the game's going to come out, probably. I'm, I'm going to guess March, in my opinion, either February or March, somewhere down the line. And, of course, EVO 2016 is going to be there, or in another fighting tournament, whatever. Whatever. So, anyway, yeah, that's my thoughts about Street Fighter V. And speaking of things I keep talking about, keep saying about EVO this, EVO that, my thoughts on... EVO 2015, Ultra Street Fighter 4 Grand Finals. My thoughts about it as a as a general gamer, somebody who wants to play for fun.